Welcome back to the Vivimat channel and happy Tabo Day! Our next speaker, Hanna Zibenko, is a PhD student in the Nanomechanical Instrumentation and Extreme Nanomechanics group at the Max Planck Institute für Eisenforschung. She did her undergraduate studies in mechanical engineering at the Kiev Polytechnic Institute and the University of Magdeburg. Her main research interests are microstructure and chemical evolution in perlitic steels under tribological load, as well as deformation mechanisms during single asperity wear at the microscale. Don't forget to leave your comments below. Hannah will start right after this message from our sponsor. Codings is a peer-reviewed journal of codings and surface engineering published online by MDPI on a monthly basis. And now, itchy and scratchy. Hi, welcome to my talk. Uh, before I start, I would like to thank uh, Stepan Eda and Karsten Gashot for giving uh, young tribology researchers like me a really great opportunity to present our work. And uh, my talk today would be about experimental measurements of scratch hardness and its correlation to the non annotation hardness. So we all know that in addition, experiments are commonly used to study hardness of materials and with that, many material related phenomena. And the scratch experiment is another versatile tool for such studies. Uh, for example, you can see here how the change of scratch hardness can be related to the change of the grain size and the delamination event of a film. And this is why we can consider a scratch experiment to be an alternative to the indentation test. Uh, for some specific applications, a scratch experiment can provide more advantages than indentation. For example, uh, increased penetration depth limit for thin film properties measurement, or some reduced effects of uh, grain orientation, grain boundaries, and surface roughness if the scratch is long enough. But uh, the scratch experiment still remains a rather a complementary technique in, to indentation, and it is applied mainly for the thin film and coating analysis nowadays. So in large part, this is due to the inability to draw a parallel between the hardness definitions in indentation and scratching. The indentation hardness uh, definition assumes that there is no friction between the indenter and the surface. And on the other hand, the scratch hardness is rather strongly related to the shear stress at the interface. And as you can see here, in a number of studies that try to analyze the relation between indentation and scratch hardness, the results were quite different. And the hardness ratio varied from 0.4 to nearly 2. Uh, depending on the material and the tips that were used for the measurement. But uh, this variety of materials and uh, tips that were used for the investigation is only part of the problem. Another problem is the variety of scratch hardness definitions that are used in the literature. Uh, the standard scratch hardness is analogous to the inundation hardness in a way that both properties are determined as a normal load divided by the projected load bearing area. And the calculation of the scratch contact area was originally proposed to be based on the width of the scratch groove. However, uh, there is no unified protocol for the width measurement, and this eventually led to different research groups measuring groove widths at the different positions, while still assuming that all these parameters carry the very same physical meaning. And some authors also use penetration depths, and calculate uh, the contact area from the deep geometry. And as a result, it is rather impossible to directly compare and discuss the results reported in the literature and find any correlations based on this data. So in this talk, we will start by asking these uh, three main questions. Um, first question would be how the contact area measurement procedure influences the resulting scratch hardness. And based on the most reliable uh, way to measure uh, scratch hardness, uh, would there be any uh, correlations between the indentation and scratch hardness that we could observe? And while we are at it, we will also talk a bit about uh, scratch hardness depth relations and tip size effects. So for this, we selected five materials that have uh, different mechanical properties and also fundamentally different deformation behavior 
And on these materials, we performed an indentation and scratch experiments. Uh, also, to minimize several sources of experimental errors, uh, we performed three, three scratches of uh, 400 micron uh, lengths for each normal force. And after the experiments, we measured the penetration depths as the average difference between the pre-scan and the scratch segment. And the average scratch width was estimated from the cross-section profiles of scratches in aluminum, copper, and cementite uh, using confocal microscope. This slide presents the contact area definitions that we use in this study. Uh, so first, for the inundation contact area, we use the standard indentation hardness definition based on Oliver and Haar. And as for the scratch contact area, it should be noted that we assume a half circular shape and there are four uh, contact area definitions in total. So there is a definition based on the average contact depth for which there are two expressions for the uh, scratch contact area, which would depend on whether a spherical or conical part of the tip is in contact. And finally, there are also three definitions for the scratch width that are commonly adopted in the literature. So uh, the width at the distance um, between the pilot peaks, the width at the transition to the maximum slope of the battery group, and the width at the surface level. So here you can finally see the plot uh, that demonstrates us how the average scratch hardness changes depending on the scratch contact area definition and the material as well as the normal load. And so the first thing that we see here is that the contact depths and the width at the surface level lead to the very similar results, um, the very similar values of the scratch hardness. So why is this? Um, because we define the contact depths as the difference between the pre-scan and the scratch segment, it contains both elastic and plastic values of uh, fractions of the depths. And at the same time, the width of the imprint does not recover during unloading, um, during indentation and scratching. And this is why both contact depths as well as the width at the surface level would represent the scratch group geometry under load. And in addition, both these uh, hardness uh, values are the highest because they assume that the slide pile up does not contribute to the contact area at all by definition. Next, uh, we can also see that uh, scratch hardness based on the width measurement does not demonstrate any monotonic trends for copper and aluminum. And there are several possible reasons for this. Uh, first, in crystalline materials, the pile-up evolution uh, control is controlled significantly by the grain orientation as well as the relative orientation between the grain and the indenter tip during scratching. Also, some local height fluctuations in confocal microscope as well as surface roughness would affect the resulting hardness uh, a lot. And another possible reason uh, is the detachment of the side pile up. So we can see here on the images that in soft materials where mechanism can change from plastic plowing to the micro, micro cutting, depending on the normal load applied. And the formation of such overhanging chip during microcutting is a possible cause for the continuous decrease of the um, scratch hardness that is based on the width at uh, the pile-up peak. And we actually observe it here for copper and aluminum. And uh, so basically the same uh, factors that uh, influence uh, the scratch width such as the individual grain orientation and surface roughness, they would affect contact depths in a very similar way. And these factors are reduced stronger because the contact depth was determined as the average depth in the steady state region of the scratch and the overall scratch length also significantly exceeds the grain size. And as a result, the hardness based on the contact depths shows us the most consistent behavior among all investigated methods. And we will then focus uh, on discussing the mainly uh, the scratch hardness based on the contact depths later. 
So if we now normalize the scratch hardness by contact depth uh, using the value at the highest normal force, uh, we can see a very distinct difference in scratch hardness for uh, soft and hard materials. So the curves for uh, copper and aluminum have similarities to the well-known inundation size effect where hardness gradually decreases to a constant value at the higher depths. And in fact, uh, this uh, scratch size effect was previously extensively studied for single crystal copper using a uh, Berkovich tip in uh, different orientations. But uh, on the other hand, this is the first time that we demonstrate that scratch hardness of cementite, soda lime glass, and silicon increase with normal force. Uh, so one of the possible reasons is that for materials that um, have small ratios of Young's modulus to hardness and at small loads, basically where um, the portion of elastic deformation is substantial, this could lead to the underestimation of hardness. But in addition, however, the reverse inundation size effect occurs only in soda lime glass. And this is an indicator that uh, hardness depth dependence uh, for hard materials may be governed by different mechanisms during scratching and indentation. When we now uh, compare the um, scratch hardness graphs for both spheroconical tips that were used in this study, we uh, see quite similar tendencies that we discussed before. And in addition, we also see that there is also a tip size effect uh, that the tip with a smaller radius yields a higher scratch hardness. And this effect is getting stronger if material's hardness is increasing. And we presume that the first reason for this uh, tip size effect in scratching is the difference in contact angle between the tip and the surface. So a larger uh, contact angle for the smaller tip would lead to a material being pushed upwards during scratching. And as for the larger tip, the material flows forward and to the side of the indenter, which increases the contact area. And secondly, during the scratching, the conventional micromechanical size effect can play a big role, especially in uh, crystalline materials. So this means that uh, smaller areas result in a larger uh, plastic strain gradients and elevated geometrically necessary dislocations and hardening. So we now will come to the last part of this talk. We analyze uh, the correlations between scratch and indentation areas um, hardness uh, by analyzing the corresponding contact areas. Uh, so the ratio between scratch and indentation hardness is essentially the inverse of the ratio between scratch and indentation contact area. And on this graph, we demonstrate the experimental contact area ratios, and we also use analytic and solution for a comparison as a first approximation of the scratch contact area. When we now normalize the Hertz equation with the inundation contact area from the inundation hardness definition, we see that this ratio is a hyperbolic function. And the slope of the hyperbola is defined by the material properties and the indenser T radius. And uh, this um, ratio between the uh, hardness and the effective Young's modulus uh, could be um, is considered as a term that determines the magnitude of the elastic recovery at a specific plastic strain. Now we will discuss the differences of strengths for different uh, materials. And the first thing that we notice is that for hard materials, um, the ratio exceeds one at lower loads, while at uh, higher normal load, the ratio decreases continuously and gradually reaches a constant value below one. And there are several reasons for such trends. So first, the uh, scratching induces a much higher equivalent plastic strain during the indentation. Um, this means that material yields during scratching at lower normal loads, and it would be required to induce plasticity during indentation. And this leads to the scratch contact area being initially larger than the indentation contact area. But as the normal load increases, and the increase in pileup provides a substantial fraction to the uh, scratch contact area. 
And this pileup increase in scratching leads to contact depth decrease and a decrease in the contact area ratio. So in, in addition, on the other hand, the influence of the pileup on the contact area would be smaller uh, than during scratching because uh, the factors of um, lateral movement, adhesion, and friction are absent. And as such, we see that the uh, ratio is decreasing below one uh, and the scratch harness is uh, becoming larger than indentation harness. If we come back to the Hertz equation that we discussed before, we know that it describes the frictionless normal contact under small strains and its application to the frictional sliding with severe plasticity is rather a simplification. But uh, our experimental curves based on contact depths closely resemble a third sense solution for sodium lime glass, cementite, and silicon, where elastic deformation is dominant. And this hyperbolic behavior indicates that the experimental contact area ratio is also inversely proportional to the normal force. But then with the increase of the normal load, we also see that there is a deviation between the experimental ratios and Hertz equation for higher materials. And this deviation gradually starts to increase with increasing normal force. And this growing difference indicates the increase of the scratch contact area due to, again, plastic deformation, uh, pileup formation, and higher strains due to friction. For soft aluminum and copper, the contact area ratios remain constant and do not change substantially with the normal load. And there is also a possibility that the forces that we applied are simply too high and that the plastic deformation is too extensive to observe hyperbolic behavior at the lowest normal force. And therefore, we only see a constant segment of the curve where we see that scratch harness remains substantially higher than indentation hardness. So in conclusion, I hope that we answered or got closer to answering most of the questions that we asked in the beginning of this talk. Uh, so first we could see that there are many sources of error and many factors that would affect the contact area measurement um, during scratching. And that the most uh, consistent and monotonic trends were provided by the scratch hardness, which was based on the contact depths uh, in the entire steady state region. Then we could see that um, there are several side effects that could occur during uh, hardness measurement uh, in scratches. Uh, first, there was a scratch size effect and also a reverse scratch size effect, depending on the material studied, and there were also a tip size effect, uh, which we attributed to the change of the contact angle between the surface and the tip, as well as uh, micromechanical uh, size effect. And in the end, we uh, looked at the possible correlation between the indentation and scratch hardness. And uh, by analyzing the corresponding contact areas, we could see that for hard materials, the uh, ratio tends to decrease with increasing normal load, and it tends to uh, get to a constant value below one, which uh, means that the scratch hardness is higher than indentation hardness. And for the soft uh, aluminum and copper, uh, we didn't observe such hyperbolic behavior and the ratio remained constant and again below one. Also, we proposed that uh, one can apply a Hertzian solution as a first approximation for the scratch contact area for uh, hard materials and if the elastic deformation is dominant. So in the end, I would like to thank first uh, Parnas Farzam, whose uh, master thesis was used as a uh, basis of this work, and uh, also Gerhard Dehm and uh, Stefan Brinkmann for their guidance and supervision during the study. And many thanks again to the organizers for, of this workshop for giving this uh, amazing opportunity to present my work. And uh, thank you for watching.